English at studycat.com slash schools. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our next speaker um, who's going to give a talk, a 30 minute talk. Um, our next talk is by who has taught in the United Kingdom, Greece, uh, Hong Kong and Venezuela. She is a freelance author, consultant and teacher trainer. She lives in London and provides consultation, teach training and teach training, uh, teacher trainer <laughs> training for organizations such as Cambridge University Press, Cambridge Assessment, the British Council and ministries of education worldwide. During all her sessions, uh, session we recommend watching and speak your view. And if you have any questions, please type them in in the Q&A box and it's over to you, Alha. Um, Thank you so much, Stephanie. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, and I really hope that this um, event finds you well and looking after yourselves in this very, very horrible time that we're all living in. Um, I just like to say before I start, as soon as I finish this talk, I will be posting a summary of it onto my blog and I will give you that address at the end. And another thing I, I just want to say is that um, this talk about formative assessment, um, I've placed it in the lower secondary area, but of course it's just as valid for primary, upper secondary and even older students. Um, so I hope there's going to be something for everybody here. Okay, so it's a little introduction. You probably have um, some knowledge. Some of you may be using lots of these things already. Um, you may know a lot about this, but I'm taking this as an introduction. And my first slide is really to try and entice you to stay and not to escape to get a coffee or um, a, another drink, um, because this is really an overview of what I'm going to be talking about. Um, in that I am suggesting or presenting that a formative assessment is a very positive tool for getting students to really um, be more active in lessons, to help them improve their progress um, in English, to get really involved on a personal level in their own learning. And what's the most important thing for me is this um, that it's going to be something that teachers can do easily i don't believe in introducing you to very complex things and so the real nub of this the crux of this talk will be to introduce you to a few very useful techniques that you can introduce at any time into your teaching to help you um my first question is really going back to the beginning is is why are we assessing learning what's why why do we do it is it just um to tell children off and to be that bossy teacher we know it all and you don't know so i think it really is important for us to have a an overview of the reason why we assess learning and i've kind of divided it up into four areas uh, the first one, obviously, is that we're trying to be aware as much as possible of what our learners are doing. What are they learning? What kind of problems do they have? Where are their successes? And this is so that we can help them more if they're having problems, obviously. And we want students also to be aware of their successes and their problems. And I think it's really important that students have an evidence based um, situation for this, that they can see where they're making progress. They can see where their their problems lie. And a lot of the time when I'm assessing my own teaching, it's really for me to to step back and think, oh, oh I'll her, you need to make some changes here. This isn't going very well. What can I do to help my learners? And the big picture is that it's not just for us. Lots of other people want to know what's going on in our classrooms. And it's not just parents and colleagues. It's the world as well. You know, the, the news programs, the government wants to know. Everybody wants to know how students are doing. Um, so let's start with this idea of traditional testing, the testing that we're very much used to. Um, and we can call it summative testing, and that's a very good way of describing it because it usually comes at the very end of a series of lessons, a, 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 an academic year, 
um, perhaps a semester where you have a test or an exam at the end of your, the learning. Um, and I think there are lots of things that are positive about traditional testing. Um, one of the really important things is I do think we need a sense of direction, all of us do, and that's why probably we're a bit lost at the moment because we don't know where we're going. But students need this sense, where am I going? Why am I learning English? What am I trying to achieve? If you don't have that goalpost to aim for, I think it's very difficult to move forward. And then there's this sense of progress as well. You know, your step by step progress. You know, you start maybe at A1, A2, and steadily you work your way up. And then you say, yay, I have made progress. I can see where I've come from, where I am now. And I think this, this idea of pulling us along, of having this um, encouragement from within, this sense of purpose is very important. Um, and I think it is something that within us is like, I want to get there. I used to have this very much when I was a student. I was like, I'm going to pass that exam, whatever happens. It was me versus the exam. And that kind of helped me um, be committed to that. Um, I do think that um, exams can inform teaching, um, good exams, um, I'm thinking particularly about the Cambridge assessment exams can be, because they're so well researched, they can help us to understand learning and teaching more. So it's this kind of cyclical thing. Um, I do think it's important to see results. And I do also think it's important to get this sense of completion that you've you've reached the end. It's kind of it's a race and you get somewhere. So summative um, assessment has a lot of benefits and a very important benefit is that we do have these wonderful um, exams that like the Cambridge exams that are so well researched. I mean, I know people that work for assessment and they are experts, they're professionals. So these examinations do have value um, in, in the world. I mean, practically anywhere you go in the world, people will know of these exams and they mean something. Um, oh, that looks like me when I was a student. Um, what is wrong with it? Why, why do we, why can't we rely just on summative assessment? Um, well, in many ways, um, it's a bit, like I said earlier, it's traditional. This is kind of something we've had for a very long time. And in the 21st century, you know, our methodology has changed a lot and the way we think about learning. So we, we really think that, you know, the student is the center of learning and their involvement is very important. And so the focus should be on the student in a very positive way. And also, it's not so much the product, it's not so much the end result, but the whole process of learning that we are concerned with. And, you know, students are all different. We're all different. Um, students will learn at different speeds, so they won't reach the same point at any given time. Um, and they learn in very different ways and they show what they know in many different ways. Um, and also that a lot of what we're doing is not just about, you know, the grammar and the vocabulary. We're teaching a lot of different things. We're teaching um, the ability to learn to learn. We're teaching, we're trying to inculcate life skills like collaboration and communication. And these are not always um, visible when you give um, a summative um, assessment. Um, so what I'm saying is that exams are valuable um, in their way, but they're not the only way that we can be doing assessment um, because they're not always inclusive. Um, multiple choice questions, short answers don't always give the opportunity for students to show everything they know. Um, and unfortunately, in a lot of situations and a lot of places I've been to around the world is that the test becomes everything. The end of year exam is everything. And this leads to teachers being judged, which is not very nice by those test results. And also this obsession with tests that, you know, the parents come and complain if they feel their student, their children are not doing well. 
And also the students are obsessed with tests and they only want to do things that are linked to the test. Um, and there is this danger of rote learning. I'll just let you read that. And I must say that, that rote learning um, has stood us, some of us, um, well. Um, I remember learning a whole essay by heart for my German A-level um, and it came up and I, I wrote it and I did well in the test, but it didn't mean that I was particularly good at German. Um, so this is not something that is a very good thing to support and encourage. And I just want to finish this part with this quote, which I just love. So this is the idea that a test is just a snapshot of one particular moment in one particular context of what a student can do. And as we know, HR departments, big companies now are saying that just passing exams, having that certificate at the end is not enough um, for, for the world, for the world of work, for the world of business, for the world of academia, that tests are not everything. So I think the biggest problem about summative testing, testing we do at the end of a period of learning, is that the information that we get comes too late. By the time you finish the year and students have taken their exam, there's nothing we can do about it. We've gone a whole year and only when we're marking those tests do we find, oh my goodness, half of them didn't really get the present perfect or that whole area of vocabulary was just not learnt. So for me, Formative assessment is very much this idea of we're assessing for learning, we're assessing while we're learning. And what I'm going to look at here is how that this is happening all the way through. How can we do this all the way through where students are taking, they're participating in this and they're taking responsibility for their learning, which I think is really crucial. And I think the other thing that's really crucial, and I really like to focus you know particular that age group where uh, lower secondary is that they should be developing some confidence in their learning and becoming positive about learning because if they lose that at that stage very early on you know it's very hard to get them to build up confidence later um so that's what i'm looking at here so i know that this is what you're saying going, okay i'll hear you're talking about General, 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 generalizations. Um, how do we do that? So this is what I want to focus on now is just some very practical tools that you can use in your classroom. So we said that formative assessment is about allowing students to be aware of their learning and getting instant feedback. So this kind of instant feedback while learning is taking place. So during a lesson, while students are doing an activity in the course book, while they're reading, while they're doing some grammar exercises. So here are four approaches to this. What can you do while students are learning for them to give you that feedback? So signs are a really lovely um, thing I, I do with students. I do this with my university students as well, is different kinds of signs. So for example, it could be a sign that says yes or no, could be um, just some signs like this. I sometimes just give cards. So that looks blue there, that's green and red cards. And on the table, while the students are working in their groups, they have something they can show me or they can give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So while they're working, I, I will say to them, you know, if you have a problem with what's going on, you can show me. So this becomes a habit. 
this becomes something that is a very natural thing to do. So you can show me that, okay, everything's fine, carry on, we, we don't have any problems. But if there is a problem, they can tell me immediately, halfway through a grammar activity, for example, they can indicate that there's a problem. Um, so what happens then is, I can go to that group, I can work with them, I can work with an individual, or if lots and lots of kids are actually showing me a red sign, I can stop the lesson and do some remedial work and say, okay, obviously I didn't explain this very well, let's go over it again. So you're getting that immediate feedback from the learners, you're allowing them to indicate that to you. Now, another um, tool I really love using with um, students is KWL, which you may well know. Um, and this can be at the beginning of a lesson, it can be at the beginning of a unit of a book. So we start with the K, what do you know about this? It could be the topic or the grammar and the students pool, they share all the things they know. The W is what do you want to know? So you gather, all the questions they may have. And then once you've finished, you talk about what did you learn? Did you answer those questions? So again, it's a process. We're looking at the process of learning. Where have I started? Where do I want to go? And how do I get there? What questions do I have to answer? And this is something I find with lower secondary, they really enjoy doing this because they set their own comprehension questions, they set their own targets, they feel very mature doing this. Similarly, um, you could use mind maps for something like this, particularly as we are very much topic focused, um, course books all have their units based on a topic. So this could be around vocabulary and grammar and ideas. Um, so something like this, you give your students a big sheet of paper per group, you have the topic before you start the unit, you fill in any information you have about the topic. And as you progress through the unit, they add vocabulary, they add ideas, they could add um, functional language, notional language, they could add useful grammar. So they're building up and they see where they're going. They're actually aware of what they're learning. And this kind of metacognition, I think, is really important for students because it's a real sense of achievement then. It's a real sense of, yes, I know that I'm learning and I'm happy to be learning. Um, the three, two, one is something I like doing with some classes. Um, and it's just, this could be done with post-its, this could be done with little letters, or it could be just something they say at the end of a lesson. So what three things did I learn? What two things do I find interesting? And one question. Don't say, do you have any questions? Say, ask me a question or ask me two questions. Because if you say, have you got any questions? You usually don't get any. So that's a, a good thing to do. Um, another thing that students can do is um, they could write you letters. And this is something that I've done a lot with older students where I've actually had them writing to me in English to tell me about their learning, to tell me how they're doing. Obviously, this depends on the level of your students, but they could keep journals about their learning in, in their own language um, as they progress and they can add more and more English as they go along. A journal is for yourself, it's private, it's personal, and it's just a process. They can share it with you if they want. And a letter is something they send to you and you can reply to. Now, self-evaluation is something we talk about a lot um, with formative assessment, is to encourage students to evaluate their own learning. And of course, some of these things I've mentioned before are very much to do with that, um, to do with them thinking about, do I get it? Have I understood this? Do I need more help? Um, one tool I use that is already there for us, so no extra work for teachers, is um, using the can-dos that are very often 
begin a unit. So um, most units have aims at the beginning. This is very much um, linked to the common European framework of re reference kind of can do's. Uh, and at the beginning of the unit, we have a list of them. And quite often, I think teachers, we don't do very much with them. We might introduce it at the beginning, but then that's it. This is a wonderful opportunity for students to go back to um, once they finish that unit and to go, OK, can I? How well can I do this? And they can do this discussing it in a group or in a pair and say, OK, well, can I talk about this and actually try to do it? So can I talk about shops and shopping centres in English? Does anything come out? Can, what? So giving them the opportunity to, to do that for themselves, not as a test, not for me to know they can share this with me, but it's very important for them to know this. And then we can have a discussion about it and we can see maybe if a lot of students don't feel that they've made enough progress, we could go back to some of those things. So it's a conversation. It's certainly not me telling them off. Um, conferences and interviews are a very useful thing to do. I, I've done this a lot at university level, but I also really enjoy doing little interviews like this, like tutorials. Uh, with my lower secondary students and they love this. They, they feel terribly grown up having appointments with me. I always teach the word appointment, that we have an appointment. And they come and they talk about how they feel about their learning. They share ideas with me. They, they share their, their worries. They share their, their successes. And they say, well, I, I really was glad about that um, essay I wrote. I thought it was really good. And we, we celebrate the, their successes. Um, but I think it's, this is a really good opportunity for asking the students um, to be Socratic, not to tell them what you think, but to ask them questions, to ask them, how do you think you're doing? Where do you think your problems are? And to really try and pull it out of them, not for them to just sit there and listen to you saying, oh, you're not very good at this, or well, that was fantastic. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a conversation, and that's a very important thing to engage students in. And part of that is very much in linked to what we have observed as well, because I find that sometimes students are very down on themselves. They're like, oh, I'm not very good at this. But then I like to go in there. So well, actually, I saw you working with your group yesterday and you were really collaborating and you used your English very well. So that comes from real evidence. Those are things that I've observed. So that's a really nice thing to link into that. Uh, just a little word about online. Um, lots of these things can be linked to online um, teaching and learning. Um, I know it's difficult, but things like we have polling. If I don't know what platforms you might be using, but a lot of platforms have polling where you can put your hand up, you can indicate things. So you can use that instead of the, the red and white cards. You can actually do that um, online. And in the chat box as well, one of the, the nice things about a lot of the chat boxes is that you can make them uh, anonymous, or not anonymous, you can make them um, blank out so only you see the chat box so students could write to you and just say slow down I'm confused I'm my brain is exploding so you can get that without everybody else having to see it so you know students may not want their friends to see that um, I think one-to-one -one tutorials are really important when you don't see students often when they're at home, you haven't seen them for a very long time, that personal thing or that ability to actually give them that encouragement, to give them that personalised feedback, to ask them those questions, that would be a really useful thing to do. And of course, you could do that through emails as well or messaging. So there's lots of opportunities to do things like that online. Um, so I'm sorry if I'm speaking very fast, but I'm very aware that we've got very little time. So where, what I'm talking about here, I think formative assessment can lead to better results because we can step back and go back to things and talk about learning. Students will get more confident. They will take a, a, a bigger role in their own learning. 
and I think that relationship with a teacher really changes because students take control. It's not us doing all the controlling, all the the bossing around and say now now stop. Now we've we've run out of time. If students say no, I need more time, they have that power, and that's a very different dynamic with the teacher. So I'm just going to give one more quote at the end. Not everything that can be counted counts and not everything that counts can be counted. So we don't just need to rely on summative assessment. And there's just my blog address. If So in five minutes time, I will upload um, a summary of this talk there. So thank you. Sorry for going on a bit. Um, oh, I look as if I'm just on time there. So shall we go to any questions? I'm just going to. Uh... Thank you, Ola. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just reading. I'm just reading the. the yes, yes, I wanted to. Thank you for your talk. <laughs> and to have a look at the questions. In fact, in the question and answer box. Yeah. Um, can. Oh, sorry. Somebody said, can signs be replaced with CCQs? Well, concept check questions are very, very useful, but I don't think it's a matter of um, replacing them. I think we can use both. I think the signs are particularly when after you've done your presentation, you've done your CCQs and then students get on to doing some work in groups, this is where they may have problems. Um, and however good our CCQs are, we don't all we haven't always checked that everybody is really on board and they may have got the, the principle of the language, but then they the questions are confusing or whatever. So I don't think it's a matter of replacing them. Um, I don't know. I have, uh, Okay, somebody's asked about um, how do we do this with large classrooms, but this is exactly where these kind of things are very useful. Um, I have experience of working in a Hong Kong um, state school where my classes had at least 44 students. And these kind of things like using the signs was really, really helpful in those large classrooms because you can see immediately, you can see that color on the table or if the students are doing the thumbs up, thumbs down, it's a much easier way of doing it rather than a small class and just asking them. So I think actually this is really good for large groups. Um, well, so Katya here has said, um, how do we encourage students from exam oriented cultures to believe in formative assessment? Like many, like many things, um, I think it's a matter of introducing, sorry, someone's ringing my doorbell, that's just typical. Um, I think it's just a matter of introducing these things and gradually getting students used to um, formative assessment. I think you can't just suddenly change and we're not, we're not getting rid of the exams, but we're introducing these things as a daily thing. And you don't have to, to discuss it too much. You don't have to say this is another way of testing. Um, just start introducing them. You know, at the beginning of a semester, say, we're just gonna do this. This is another technique. I want to hear your feedback. So I think it's, you know, it's not, we don't wanna shock students and say, forget about exams. But I think these are these two things can live together very happily. Um, Somebody, Sandra Torres, has said, when do you do the 3-2-1? Um, well, I would do the 3 two, one at different. It doesn't matter. You choose where you could do it. You could do it at the end of a lesson. You could do it at the end of the week. You could do it at the end of a module, at the end of a unit of a book. So I think it's really up to you where you use it. As long as you use it kind of consistently and students get into the habit of doing it. I wouldn't, I, I tend to do things like that at the end of the week. I think it's a nice way to finish the week. I usually do that and then right at the end of the lesson have some kind of quiz and, and you know, some, something like Kahoot, which students really enjoy. So I think there's none of these things are kind of set in stone. They're techniques that you can 
you can choose one, you could do another one. It's really up to you, but all of them, those, those kind of things I've talked about, are very easy to add to your repertoire. Um, and if you really enjoy, like doing them, you know, just try introducing them, see how they go, get your students to tell you how they, they feel about them. Um, oh dear, that's a very complicated question here. It's a socio-political issue. I don't, I think I'll, I might, I might answer that on my blog because it's quite a complicated question and I know. Thank you, Olha. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yes. thank, thank you for your time. Uh, so now we're going for a break. Okay, and we will move on to our next speaker. Thank you. Thank bye you. bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Study cat for schools.